spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Imagine that. All that would be left of me is a singe on the sofa and some rendered fat. Their faces, the guilt, that would teach them for not visiting me much. Oh, don't you worry. This is just a game I play when I'm feeling a bit low. I imagine the strangest ways I could pop me clogs that would teach those <laughs> my family, the ones I gave birth to and nursed on their sick beds, that they don't just swan off into their own worlds and forget me. I were playing exactly the same game the day it happened. Thursday it was. I'd just been to the WI, so I had a whole week of nothingness stretching before me. I was about to turn on the TV to watch Doctors. It's the only way you get to see one these days. When I heard a smash from the kitchen, a window breaking, and I'd only just had them washed the week before. Twenty-five pound it cost me. Well, I were a bit shocked, and I was hardly out of my chair when this streak of black charged into my front room, waving a crowbar in the air in a vain attempt to look menacing. He just looked like he was swatting flies. He was a tall, skinny lad, dressed all in black with a balaclava on his head. He was sweating, as it wasn't the right attire for summer. Bits of broken glass were falling off him onto my Persian rug. Hand over your credit cards, he shouted in rather a nasal voice. I'm guessing he had sinus trouble. Was I frightened? Did I think, here's me chance to die in a terrible way, to upset the kids in the neighbourhood, for that matter? <laughs> No, of course not. I'd talk boys like him. Retired teacher, me. He were no master criminal, and he was too puny to inflict a fatal blow with a crowbar. Credit cards, where are they? I put on me befuzzled look. Oh, I said, I think they're upstairs in me bedroom. I'll have to come up with you because I always hide me handbag, in case of thieves, you know. I held my arm out, indicating I needed helping up, and the soft lad obliged. I hobbled over to the stairlift and put it on the slowest setting. I began to glide majestically, like a swan from Swan Lake. I was tempted to do the arm movements, but I didn't want to wind him up too much. During my slow-motion ascent, I asked him, So, how much do you get for breaking and entering these days? Depends on your previous, he grunted. What's your previous then? Nothing much. A bit of shoplifting in my teens. We were all doing it. I bet your mum was so proud of you, I pressed. Leave me mum out of it. I touched a nerve. I had time to give him a good once over. I guessed he had a job because he was wearing black suit trousers and black leather shoes. He can't have been married as his shoes were scuffed and no woman would let her man out looking like he did. I concluded that he probably lived with his mum, or mum had just died, I wasn't quite sure. At the top of the stairs, he helped me out of the chair again. I made a big show of looking for me handbag, stopping frequently to scratch me head and look puzzled and mutter, I'm sure it was in here a few times. He was starting to look worried, but I noticed him looking at me family photos on the dressing table. I remember. I took it downstairs to pay the window cleaner. Oh, what a waste of money that turned out to be. The lad went bright red in the bits where I could see him. I'm not sure if it was anger or embarrassment. I tottered back to the stairlift and put it on a faster speed. To be honest, I felt a bit sorry for him. I was about to play the trump card. On the way down, I asked, What do you need the money for? I know you have a job. How do you know that? I raised my eyebrows, but didn't answer. He must have thought I knew where he worked, seen him even. Supermarket, I'm guessing. We reached the kitchen, and I saw the two panes broken in my back door. I gasped loudly and looked as if I was about to faint. I'll have to get Jim from next door to board it up and he's only got one arm, you know. What about your children? Won't they help? 
I told him about Julie trying for a baby but needing IVF because her husband's swimmers needed armbands. And Alex, my youngest, the computer geek who spends the weekends train spotting. And then Ed, who works for the BBC and occasionally drops in with his boyfriend when they're touring with question time and pass nearby. I then said how my husband left on the day our last child left the house for good. No help for me and no chance of grandchildren by the looks of things. He looked flustered but shouted, Credit cards! I pulled me purse out of me bag and handed them over. Do you need me pin numbers? He narrowed his eyes. You'll give me the wrong ones and call the police when I'm gone. Well, you could tie me to this chair, I said, and come back if I've given you the wrong ones. I could be back and forth all day. I suggested he could take me with him, but pointed out that a balaclava in the summer outside Tesco would raise alarm. He realised he'd have to take it off and that I'd see his face. You know, I'm good at memorising number plates, so the police would soon find your car. His embarrassed state worsened when he whispered, I came on the bus. You didn't really think this through, did you, lad? And with that, he started to cry. Great big sobs, like the floodgates had opened. He had snot leaking from the inside of his balaclava. Then I made me next move. What's your name, lad? Richard. He'd answered without thinking and looked cross with himself. Why do you need the money, Richard? Is it drugs? Then he told me the whole sorry story. It was for drugs, but for his mum, not for him. She had a rare cancer, and the drug that could give her a longer life expectancy had not been approved for use on the NHS. The lad was desperate. So me and Richard came to a deal. I wouldn't report him to the police, as long as he got my window fixed and cleaned the mess he'd made inside my house. In return, I rounded up the boundless money-raising energies of the W.I., I'd only been going for a damn good argument every Thursday, so at last they came in handy. I told Richard about crowdfunding. I'd seen it on the rain. We went on the local news too, and the funds came pouring in. I've got two good friends from this adventure. Richard, who kept his side of the bargain, but has gone further and visits me every Sunday. He brings me the food about to expire from Asda, where he works, and his mum, Irene. Irene is good company and goes to the bingo with me. We both know she isn't going to last forever, but we've all got to die of something. Spontaneous combustion eye. <laughs> what a way to go.